The most inbred family. Here we go again, another inbred video. A few weeks ago, I uploaded a video covering America's most inbred family. This video turned out very popular, accruing 2.2 million views and thousands of comments. One of the many comments on that video said I should look into the Colt family, which was a family I had not heard of at the time. Oh boy, I rather wish I hadn't. And so, I'm going to share my findings with you today. At first, I didn't think much of this family, but once I looked into their family tree, I realised that they were, in fact, even more inbred than the Whitakers I had covered beforehand, and are, quite possibly, the most inbred family in the world. Meet the Colt family, who are Australia's most inbred family, without doubt. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like or a comment, and without further ado, let's move on to today's video. In 2012, on a farm four hours southwest of Sydney, police were called to a report of a putrid smell of urine and human feces. When police arrived to the farm, they found 20 rabid dogs, apparently no owner had them. When police pressed further, they soon found seven siblings who appeared incredibly inbred. Their children were even more inbred than they were, and some of those even had their own set of even more inbred children. Police were alerted by this and decided to question members of the family who piecemeal traded family secrets. Meet the Colt family, Australia's most inbred family without doubt. Why? Four generations of the Colt family were inbred, including the direct ancestor of the Colt clan. Today's video will be structured into two parts. Firstly, we will go over the family tree of the Colt family, establishing which members of the family were inbred but also which members of the family committed incestuous relationships. The second part of the video, we use the consanguinity coefficient to prove just how inbred this whole family is. And it will be pretty complex since the family has multiple branches of inbreeding. The Colt family was founded by Tim Colt and his wife June, born 1946 and 1948 respectively. We don't know if Tim knew this when they married, but June's parents were actually full siblings, meaning that June herself was inbred. Tim and June were not related, meaning that their seven children were less inbred than their mother June. When police interviewed the family in 2012, June and Tim were both dead, and most of their children were in their 40s and 50s. Their eldest, Rhonda, aged 56, was unmarried, yet had six of her own children, aged between 41 and 15. Because her eldest was 41, Rhonda was only 15 when she gave birth, which is not only illegal, but suspicious considering she failed to report to police who the father was. However, Rhonda's two sisters, Betty and Martha, were more willing to impart information with the police about their children. The youngest sibling, Martha, was her father's favourite, according to her. Unfortunately, this translated into him, well, doing certain actions on her. When Martha was 18, she gave birth to her eldest child, whose father, Tim, was also its grandfather. She gave birth to four more children, all of whom having the same father. The other sister, Betty, confessed that some of her children were likely products of her own father. DNA testing confirmed that five of her 12 children were indeed fathered by Tim. Disgustingly, when police arrived at the family farm in 2012, they also caught Betty and Martha's brother, Frank, doing something inappropriate, to say the least, to one of Betty's youngest children, Petra. Frank was detained for this, and he stated that he did not understand what he did wrong, considering his father did the same act with his own children. It's likely that the Colt family did not understand the disgusting nature of their actions. In fact, when Betty was investigated further by the police, she was confessed about something her daughters informed her years ago of incidents involving their brothers. Now, I can go into details here, but for the sake of monetization and for the added fact that I do not want to explicitly say what happened out loud, please refer to the article I have attached in the video description. Another one of Betty's daughters, Tammy, confessed that her three children were fathered by her own brother, Derek. Tammy, aged 27, was only 12 when her brother started to act on her. 
Tammy had three children, but the youngest had died directly from an inbreeding disorder, and the other two were incredibly sickly due to their inbreeding. However, the most disgusting part of the family's whole mess comes from the great-granddaughter Kimberly. She claimed that her father was a backpacker from Sweden, but DNA tests showed that she not only had the same father as her mother, but also had the same father as her grandmother, Betty. This means that her father was Tim, who at the same time was her grandfather and also her great-grandfather. It's easy to realise that Tim Colt was the progenitor of the whole inbreeding chronic. However, interviews with the Colt grandchildren implicated their mother, Betty Colt, as being their father's accomplice as she encouraged her children to engage in illegal acts with one another. She also banned her daughters from visiting the doctor when pregnant and made them give birth alone, fearing that health professionals would want to pry into details of the father and potentially arrest him. Martha's children, slightly less inbred, are, however, a microcosm for the effects of inbreeding on the entire family. For example, Martha's youngest son, Carl, was unable to walk, could not even speak, and struggled to read. Carl's elder brother had routine infections due to his inbreeding and also had a hearing impediment. Martha's daughters were victims of their cousin's siblings' actions, but because they were so inbred, they were unable to conceive which is ironically fortunate, though tragic for the family. Before we dissect into the inbreeding of each individual, I do want to keep something in mind here. This is not really something that I suggest mainly in my videos, but lately I'm realizing it's very important to do so. When we assess victims and culprits, it's clear that this family contains multiple perpetrators of illegal activity. However, when someone is born into a family where this behavior is regarded as normal, it's hardly surprising that even victims later become perpetrators. Now, as I earlier conveyed, there are many notable individuals in this family. In fact, when the family were visited in 2012, there were 36 named members of the family. Only one of these, Tim, had no inbreeding, meaning that all other 35 suffered from inbreeding in one shape or another. In order to break down how inbred everyone is, I will group certain members of the family together. For example, the children of Tim and June all had the same inbreeding, being of full siblings. Martha's children shared parents and so they would have the same inbreeding, even having the same father, and therefore the same inbreeding as Betty's inbred children. Tammy's two surviving children are in their own group, as is Kimberly, whose father was also her grandfather and great-grandfather. To work out how inbred everyone is, I will be using the consanguinity coefficient as always. If you haven't watched this video already, please consult, and I have attached this in the video description. This will break down how to work out how inbred someone is. The first inbred person in this family is June, who was a child of full siblings. This means it's easy to work out how inbred she is, and she had an inbreeding level of 0.25, 25%. Because Tim was not known to be inbred, having children with June means that their seven children had an inbreeding level of 0.125, 12.5%. So we've gone through the easy part, but now we're moving on to the more complex situation. Let's look at Martha and Betty's inbred children, who were not only cousins, but half-siblings since they shared the same father and grandfather, Tim. Their father, Tim, was not inbred, but their mothers were partly inbred, so we need to keep that in mind. But because their parents were parent and child, their inbreeding level would, at a base, be 0.25. But because their mother is inbred, this also needs to be included. This means that the children had an inbreeding level of about 0.3 or 30%. Keep in mind, Charles II of Spain was less inbred than these children, which explains why many of them were unable to have children, walk, talk, write, or in some cases, speak. Unfortunately, not all of these children were infertile. Tammy, who was not an inbred child of the mother, nonetheless had an inbreeding level half of her mother. Her children were fathered by her non-inbred brother Derek, who had the same inbreeding level as her, because they were full siblings, their children would have an inbreeding base level again of 25%, but we have to also include their parents' inbreeding level. So this means that Tammy had an overall inbreeding of 29%.
and this is responsible for the death of one of her children, the youngest child. Like Charles II's own siblings in history, they died from the same reason, inbreeding. Finally, the last member of the family we are going to investigate today is Kimberly, who is the most inbred person in the entire family. Her mother was the daughter and granddaughter of Tim, meaning that she had an inbreeding level of 30%. However, Tim then performed another act of abuse, resulting in the birth of Kimberly. In total, Kimberly's inbreeding level is roughly 0.43 or 43%. Keep in mind this is close to 50%, which would be the most inbred a person could possibly be. And there we have it, the world's most inbred family, the Colt family. Please leave a like or a comment and let me know what you learned from this video. This was a difficult one to make considering the nature of the video, but I wanted to impart my findings with you. As always, I am the Shy Historian and stay tuned for many more.